want to share with you how to enable serverless metrics in Apache OpenWhisk on Kubernetes with Prometheus. I'm from IBM. My name is Guo Yingchun. So a bit of self-introduction first. I've been working in IBM for more than 10 years. I'm an open source developer, so I've been working in open source community for quite a long time, starting from OpenOffice to OpenStack. Then in 2016, I my focus was sh sh uh, shifted to serverless. I start with Apache OpenWhisk. And now I also work on Canadian. And I'm also a con contributor to Creative. So this is an outline for my presentation. First, I would like to talk about how we monitor in OpenWhisk. I will start with Apache OpenWhisk overview. And I will explain the metrics defined and collected in the command and also how these metrics displayed in Prometheus, Prometheus, and I was finished with the demo. So beginning to start with, how many of you have heard of uh, Serverless? Quite a few, good. So, as the compute cloud computing structure involves, users' focus will have been narrowed down. At the beginning, we need to pay attention to the whole physical machine, then virtual machines, then the focus is on container, containers. Now the focus is on functions for end users. They don't need to pay more attention we don't need, uh, on the underlying infrastructure. They can focus more on business logic. And for cloud vendors, they get higher computing speed and better resource utilization. So I think that in the future, we'll pay more attention to more segments. What about serverless? What about its advantages? In serverless, the functions is daily event trigger, and it is auto scaled and even scaled to zero. That means it won't occupy any resource unless you call it. In other words, it is short-lived. This help us to reduce cost because now the cost is uh, generated by your use, uh, usage. So without usage, there won't be any charge. And also, developers can pay more attention to their business logic. They don't need to worry about underlying infrastructure. That help them to focus on the market. If there's any change, they can update their app um, easily, or they can put their idea into reality easily. So how do you make your own serverless platform? Kubernetes is a well-known platform to all of you, I guess. And in terms of container orchestration, it can be, uh, it's fair to say that it is a unicorn or monopoly um, in this serverless orchestration. Then you can find an open serverless, open source serverless project and deploy it into Kubernetes. And there are Quite a few projects, open source, source serverless projects on that can be deployed in Kubernetes. For example, OpenWhisk, Canative, and Kubernetes. So this helped uh, manufacturers to lower their cost in terms of uh, deployment on Kubernetes. So Apache OpenWhisk was initiated by IBM. It is an it, it is now an incubator in the Apache community. The aim is to build a open source event triggered 
function needs service platform. So I think the Open Whisk is quite a well-established pro project in the community because it has the Apache software fun foundation and it is pro proven on the IBM cloud. So it is a quite a mature project. In the Open Whisk, it encouraged event-driven programming. The event trigger action. There is an input, then it will activate the or an action which is called coding. And you can, the coding supports the common languages like Java, Python. The Apache OpenWhisk can be deployed on any Docker-supported platform. So Apache OpenWhisk can be applied in Kubernetes as well. We have a project through the Helm, then you can deploy the Apache OpenWhisk on Kubernetes. This is the structure for the development uh, deployment. So you can see the core mod modules of uh, OpenWhisk. On the left is the user rent. We can skip that. And followed by the NGIX. NGIX is an API gateway. It will transfer the request into controller. And the controller will send the request through load balance to Kafka, and the Kafka will send it to Invoker. The Invoker will call the container and put in the code and execute it. Between the controller and the Invoker, Kafka help with the communication between the two. And all the data is saved in the coach DB. And on the top, you see a zookeeper. It is installed together with Kafka. So based on this structure, there are two core modules in OpenWhisk. One is controller, the other is Kafka. Uh, and other than that, the Kafka and uh, database, these are also important modules. So this is the typical user cases in serverless. Service in itself is a microservice platform. The code can run on this platform. And this code runs in stateless status. Therefore, the service itself is a microservice platform. You can implement fine-grained microservice APIs on it. It is also suitable for the large number of events, or the events or the functions can be put on this serverless platform. And it also has the DevOps. Your code up up upgrades on, can be used on this platform as well. So, metrics is very important on serverless. Not only for serverless platform, because for serverless, that means developers are far away from infrastructure. Maybe the developers are not experienced IT workers. For example, a painter want to write a code to, to process her, uh, his or her image. So for these amateur developers, they know they know something about Python or some basic languages, and they want to know after the program is uh, uh, put on the cloud how 
the program can run on the clouds. They have no idea. Therefore, monitoring is very important, especially for surveillance. Therefore, for metrics or telemetry, that's the only way for such developers to understand what happens on the server. For the cloud, cloud companies, the metric is really important because it's useful to understand the system health condition, and it is necessary to enable measuring and the bowling. So, metric is really important. So, how do we define the metrics in the open risk? Open risk distinguish between systems and the user metrics. System metrics typically contain information about system performance in the system metrics. It will collect via the open source project called Common, and all these system metrics will usually used by providers and operators. Another metric is the user metrics. It contains information about action performance in the open width. We will use it as an event and send it to the Kafka. So in the Kafka, you will receive a lot of the message, and all these messages are the information of the action performance, and it is consumed by the open waste users, and it can be used for billing or audit purposes, but we don't expose it to the users directly in, in IBM functions, and you can use it via the user interface, and all this info can also be used for the audit and billing at the same time as well. And later, I will focus on the system management for the use of matrix is its a realization in the open whisk is different. So I think it's another topic. So let's focus on the system metrics. Why did we choose the common to be the open source monitoring framework? Open whisk is written by Scala, and Scala is based on the Java. And also use another Java base, it's called AKKA, which is the distributed communication software. And in the open web, when I choose that, what can I use to collect the metrics and to record the metrics? At the time, we chose the common because we thought that the common is a really outstanding metric collection based on the JVM, and currently it has already been able to support the Scala and the ACA, so that's why we chose the common. There are some features of the common, for example, it has a really powerful matrix. It can be distributed, it can be able to use for distributed tracing and contest propagation APIs in a single library, and also provide different metric recording instruments in its port metric API, which will be covered later. Once we switch the recorder, we don't need to change the matrix index. And currently, the common is also improving and optimized as well. Therefore, it can work with some really popular monitoring tools such as the Prometheus and the Zipkin. So I think that the common is really convenient to use. It's just an API, and an API when we write code and when we need to make the metric and what kind of metric indicator we need to call class. And everything can be defined, and then all these metrics will be collected by the common. So let's have a look at the common metrics instruments. Well, actually, it provides different kind of the instrument. For example, the counter counts how many times it was in increasement during a reporting period, good for counting errors or occurrence of the specific events in your device. Another one is the gauge, which is the metric value, and track a single value that can be increasement increasement or explicitly set, good for slow-moving variables such as the available memory and this usage. And the next one is the histogram. Track. It is quite complicated metric. It can track the entire value distribution of a given metric within a specific time. It is good for the array or 
The Q. So the data of the queuing is, or the number of the people of the queuing is changing from one to ten or from one to five. So during this period, what we need to count? We need to count the mean value or the maximum value or the minimum value. But with the histogram, it can record all the data, all the values we need. It also have the data structures enable it to be stored in a really smooth area. So if you are in that you can read all these documentations of the common. Well, the next function is the timer. It allows you to start and stop the timer. And another one is the range sampler. So all these are the instruments. And the third one are used quite often in the open waste, but we don't use the last two in the open waste. And in the open waste, the matrix are from the controller and the invoker, all these metrics we call the execution of the user code is called activation. It will monitor the activations, memory usage, Kafka database, and HTTP requests, and etc. There are over 60 metrics till now. And currently, I only give you some really typical case. For example, counter. We use the counter to port the count of the activation set to Kafka. And we also use it to record the count of the non-blocking activation started. So the counter is used to count. Another one is the gauge. We use it to record the number to record the number of the activations being worked upon for a given controller. And the amount of the RAM memory is used for the flight activations for the histogram, we use it. We use its invoker to manage the memory usage, and we also use it to record the numbers of the Kafka topic to receive activations to complete. And after all these kind of metrics, so let's look at the Prometheus. Common is only a library. The purpose is to collect the metrics for you. After the metric is collected, you need to store it somewhere else, right? In the past, we used the SD, and currently, we treated treat Prometheus as an alternative. Prometheus is an CNCF project. It's a system and service monitoring system. It collects metrics from configured targets at given intervals and evaluates the rule expression, display the results, and can trigger alerts if some condition is observed to be true. So I think that it is quite a complete monitoring system. It does not have a lot of advantage. For example, it has a really powerful data searching language, and it's not rely on the distributed storage. And the time series collection happens via a pool model over HTTP. And in order to get the monitoring data, we can use the static way and dynamic way to find the exporter of the report. And it also supports different kind of the diagrams. So let's see that if we use the open waste, or if we use the open whisk metric, if we use the Kafka to class the open waste metric and see that whether we can compare and we can find it to the Prometheus as well. And let's have a look at this one from the middle. The Prometheus core is the Prometheus server. In the server, the retrieval module is to class the metrics. There are two ways. The first one is to pull metrics, and when they class the 
matrix field pool, it must have the exporter. The matrix must be exposed to the pool, and the retrievers can get all the metrics. And it can also use the push method to collect the data. But there are some short time tasks. For example, this kind of task only lasts for about several seconds, and but the process will take you about 10 minutes, 10 seconds. In this way, you will miss a lot of data. In this way, we have the gateway, and the temporary storage can be transferred to pool, and then it can be collected and stored in the memory. So we can use the query of the Prometheus set to search it. On the right-hand side, the module is called alert manager, which means that when something, some condition happens, the alert will be sent. It also have the web UI, and API client, all the thing has already been available. So let's look at the service defined de uh, detective module. Beside the dynamic one, we can also use the label method to find all these kind of the abnormal conditions. In the common project, we developed a common Prometheus as border, which is an open source project. The data is written below. It supports the integration of the common and Prometheus. It is really simple. As long as you add a really simple statement, the matrix connected by the common will be converted to Prometheus format and exposed to the HTTP address. Or exposed to the HTTP address slash D. Metric and in this way, this kind of metric can be consumed by the Prometheus, and you can add some statements in the Prometheus, which will enable the Prometheus can pull the data from these terminals. So that's all the statements that we add to this project. So let's have a look at this diagram. We only take the open with controller here, but currently we expose both the controller and the invoker. In the controller, we use the common to collect the metric. Um, we use the common and Prometheus disorder to expose the stress slash Asports to abroad, and when I use the Prometheus, the retriever will just pull the data from these terminals or these sockets, and this way the metric can be shown on the interface of the Prometheus. And later, I'd like to like to give you a simple demo. In the target, you can see that the controller and the evokers has already got the metrics respectively. Well, now I'd like to give you a really simple demo. Well, actually, the demo has already been uh, installed properly, and I mean that the common and the Prometheus project has already been installed. So I just want to show you the result. Well, actually, this one is stored on the cloud, so maybe it is a little bit slow. So here, it got the data of two edges, and here are all the metrics. The, the one started with the uh, counter, uh, the C means uh, counter, and gate means measurement. 
Here is the diagram. These are the collect uh, metrics collected. Let's pick one. This is uh, this is uh, monitored by the controller and the send it the the time for the activate activation, which is sent to the Kafka. And for counter, basically it's a value, either 0, 1, 2, something like that. So this is two. Basically it's a number. It indicates how many topics are studied. So that's the demo. So this is the demo, and uh, that's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. If not, can you use the uh, microphone, please? If you want to write a function on fast platform, and maybe this function need to connect to the third party like object storage, or Elixir, or Kafka, then will you provide some variable uh, resources? And also, there may be a huge number of code well, for the functional service. If you use uh, object storage, we would suggest you to use cloud service to do that. For example, use the RESTful API, call that. If you can use the third party um, existing services, then just use, use that service. If that service is not available, then you can bundle your uh, data code and the database. And that would involve a huge uh, uh, project. So what about IBM? I mean, if I use the IBM the service, then will IBM provide some grants or service for us? So, uh, yes, IBM's uh, function are integrated with IBM's cloud service. So if you use the uh, use uh, the services on IBM cloud, it's very convenient. Thank you. So after listening to your presentation, to my knowledge, so you use the exporter to uh, provide some metrics for monitoring uh, for mo Prometheus. So for the image display, do you have any measures in this regard? In our community, um, there's a developer developed the Grafana interface, but um, not on Prometheus. So, okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, one more question. Thank you. One more question. So, so will IBM provide some uh, result tracing or monitoring? Yes. What about alert system? Alert system is also available. Thank you.